Amen. Now hold your word up high and repeat after me. This is the word. Let it revelate. Let it open the minds of those who read upon its pages. Lord, we just thank you for another opportunity to be before your people. God, as you see and know that you hear my voice and the stuff in this, but God, I ask you at this moment in time, allow your Holy Spirit to stir up in me, God, and overcome any ailment, anything that's slowing me down physically. God, we ask you to allow this word to penetrate the hearts and the minds of those that will be uh, receiving it, even now, and those that may hear it later. God, we ask you to open up the understanding that everything that is shared may be planted into good soil, God, that it may find root. God, God we want to be who you have called us to be. We want to do what you have called us to do. We don't want to be sideline participants. We don't want to just be voices with no action. But God, we want to be active participants in what you're doing. And we want to be found doing the work when you return. So God, we ask you to come in at this time and begin to touch our hearts and our minds and become the church that you are calling for. That worship in spirit and in truth. And God, we ask you to do this through the mighty power of your Holy Spirit through the knowledge and understanding of your son. And we ask all this in your son Jesus' name we pray. I all say with a hearty amen. Amen. Put your hands together in his house. Amen. <clears throat> Do y'all pray for me? I'm serious. Sister Terry, you pray for me. You pray for my strength. I need y'all to pray for me on today. Amen. So it says... Acts 2 and 41 says, So those who received his word were baptized. And there were added that day about 3,000 souls. Could you imagine? Sister Sanford, the 200 Broadway, Mount Moriah, Living Branch, had 2,000 souls. Sparks, we couldn't be here no more. Sister Torsha, you couldn't sit where you were sitting because there wouldn't be no room for you to sit there. Kalisha, you, you had to come up here and we had to have you up here with us. And I'm messing with y'all. And, and I want y'all to focus in on 42. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship to the breaking of bread and the prayers. So thinking Stokes, they didn't just sit as believers, but it says they got involved. We're going we gonna to mess with this a little bit. 43, and all came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. So the men of God and those who God had called was doing wonders, signs, and miracles. Why? Because the hearts of the people, look at your neighbor and say, was on one accord. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions, Anthony, and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. So, so Mike, they was doing the work of ministry. Felicia, they was feeding the poor. They was housing the homeless. They was clothing the clothless, the ones that didn't have clothes, put shoes on the feet of those who didn't have shoes. Sparks, look at your neighbor and say, we was doing the work. We going somewhere today. We was doing the work. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes. Oh, wait a minute. It didn't just, Terry, it just didn't happen at the church. They came to your address, sat in your house, broke bread. That's talking about communion. But just not communion, but they broke bread and opened it up and, and learning about the Christ that they now believe in. 
Veronica, it's so good to have you back. They was talking and discussing. You and Deacon Stokes was inviting folks in, and, and Kalisha comes, and Sister Sanford comes, and y'all broke bread, not at 200 Broadway. Y'all broke bread at your house. Invited your neighbors in. Do you want to know about this good news? Do you want to know about the son who came and dwelt amongst? Do you want to know? Look at your name and say, do you want to know? Mm -hmm. They received their food with glad and generous hearts. And look at 47. Praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who would, or uh, those who were being what? Saved. Amen. Now, this is part three to our Alive series. Michael, go back to two. I mean, the second verse. And they devoted themselves. Who is they? Kalisha, who is it? Mom, I, I heard Sister Shelley say the saints. Good answer. What would you say, Sister Kalisha? The saints. See, the apostles devoted themselves to what God, through Christ, had called them the Great Commission. They went into the highways, into the crevices, and they proclaimed the good news of Christ to all that would give ear. And as they came in to the fold, as they became a part of the tribe, as they began to believe and receive sparks in this God that incarnated himself in flesh and gave his name Emmanuel, but you knew him as Jesus. They devoted themselves. I want y'all to look at that word devoted. I ain't gonna be before y'all long on today. Terry, are you devoted? Connors, are you devoted? I want y'all to think this morning. See, because we, we, we put too much on. No, they. Look at your name and say they. No, say they. Say we. Uh huh. We were devoted. Devoted means to be earnest towards. Are you earnest towards the things of God? Amen. To give all. Sister Sanford, do you give your all? Anthony, do you give your all, brother? Sister Ren, uh, Ren do you give your all? To be consistently diligent. So this wasn't sometimes. Terry, this was their life. Every day, they was devoted. Look at your name and say, every day. To adhere closely to it says they were devoted to the apostles' teachings. Put up uh, 42 uh, again, Micah. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. They came together to pray, not just at 200 Broadway, not just at the building of gathering, not just at the synagogue. Terry, they came to pray in their home. They had breakout sessions. Some would be at Brother Stokes' house. Some would be at Brother Sparks' house. Some would be at Brother Terry's house. Anthony, some would come to your house and they were breaking bread and the church was growing. Why? Because the work wasn't just happening at the place of gathering. It was happening where they rested. Look at your name and say, are you devoted? Mm -hmm. That's my new thing now, Anthony. Mm -hmm. I like it. I want y'all to think. Breaking the bread, they didn't wait to come, Deacon Stokes, they didn't come and wait for the table to be rolled out and all the, all the uh, trimmings to be put up. And No, they broke bread at home. They had their own 
own unleavened bread, Terry, and they, they had their own wine and they are their own grape juice or whatever you want to have. And they in their own house with, with, with Mariah and, and Sister Terry and Brother Terry, before they got to 200 Broadway, they broke bread. They opened the book and they read and they studied. Sister Terry, what's this scripture meaning? And y'all broke bread. At home, look at them say at home. See, we wait until we get here every Sunday and wonder why we ain't growing because we ain't doing that Monday through Saturday. We wait to get to the church on Sunday and that's the only time we, we break and bread. That's the only time we dive into the scripture. That's the only time we kind of pray. But they devoted themselves to teaching and fellowship. They, look at the name, say they. Say we. So that means you should be able to teach something. Because that means you should be able to share something and somebody gain something from what you shared. So that means you should be able to open your mouth and people understand the Lord who you serve at some capacity. Because you was devoted. Look at that last one. Prayer. How many people pray? How many have a lifestyle? This is something we need to start working on together and collectively. We need to come together and pray. We need to fast together. For, uh, for 21 days, we're we going we to turn over our plate from this time to this time collectively. And we're going to pray for God to do a work amongst us. Look at them and say they was devoted. Go to 3, 43. And all came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. But what happened first? They were devoted. See, the see you, you want to see the signs. You want to see the wonders. At least you want to see the acts. You want to see the souls drawn in. But there is a step. Sister Terry, that is... There's a step. There's, there's certain things. If we want to see God do the miraculous here amongst us, there's certain things we got to do. We got to get devoted. We had to have a hunger for him. I can put up uh, James 1 and 22. What does it say? Y'all know this verse. This, this, we quote this. I hear Dick and Connors quote this all the time. We don't want to just be hearers. When you are devoted to something, it says, but 
Be doers of the word, not hearers only. And I want you to underline that last part. Deceive in yourselves. Stokes, I don't want to be deceiving myself. Huh? Amen. I don't want to be deceiving myself. I don't want to be thinking I'm doing and I'm not. I think I've done my part because I came to church at 11.30 on Sunday. I did. What, no, you didn't. You didn't do your part. What you do through the week? Who have you reached out to? Uh, not, not for uh, an event, not for this and that. No, for the gospel. Who are you telling about your Lord? Who are you trying to win to the faith? See, they was about the work of ministry. Look at them, they said they was about the work. It was more, it was important to them. Paul said, I have you know nothing. But Christ and him crucified. We talked about that on the Bible band. When you hungry for him and you thirst after him, we're going to get there. James says, be doers of the word. Not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Some of us are deceiving ourselves because we're not putting into action what we hear. We ain't doing. <laughs> we dead weight on a pew. We dragging things and holding stuff up because we ain't doing. We want everybody else to do. No, that's the pastor's job. No, it's not because it said they. They were devoted. They. That includes you. You want to put all the weight on the pastor. Pastor got to do everything. Pastor this. Pastor. No, I ain't supposed to call everybody. They. Look at them and say they. Mm-hmm. They did the work. They. Look at them. Say they. They means more than one, don't it? If it said he did the work, then, we, we, then you got something going. But it didn't say he, it said that. And even when it came to the apostles, it said the apostles were the so it was more than one. Deceiving yourself. Go to James 2, Michael. We're talking about we alive. So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Look at the names, are you dead? You know them, Sister Sanford, by the fruit that they bear. If I can't see no fruit, if I can't see no activity, Anthony, I got to surmise that that tree is dead. But we alive, Mike. We got the spirit of the living God. Look at that. The spirit of the living God active in us so we cannot be dead. If that's really activated in us, look at that and say, is he in you? So faith by itself, proclamation by itself, saying you got it by itself means nothing. It's dead. If it ain't followed by works. If it ain't followed by, look at your name and say, evidence. Yeah, some of y'all need to start putting folks under a magnifying glass. Like, I got to see the evidence. Let's see what's going on here. You talk a good game. Go to the next one. But someone who will say, you have faith and I have works. James wasn't playing. Show me your faith apart from your works and I will show you my faith by my works. I will show you I believe by what I do. Sister Terry, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings and the breaking of bread and fellowship and prayer. Their works, Sister Ren, showed that they were of the light. Their works show that they was a part of the way. Their works show that they was filled with the Holy Spirit. Not their words, their works. Go to the next one. You believe that God is one. You do well. Look at it is. Even the demons believe 
and shudder. So believe in it, and you should believe. <laughs> you should believe. But guess what? That ain't, that ain't enough. That's why Paul said, now that you have believed, we talked about that last, now that you have believed, I pray that the, the spirit of wisdom come over that you may understand, Sparks, who he is and what he wants you to do. See, it ain't just believing alone. It's believing and activating on what you believe. Walking into and activating on what you heard. Put it into action. The demons believe. Paul, John, James says, even the demons believe. So don't think you did something because you said you believe. The demons believe. Anthony, the demons believe. So that, but I want you to believe to the point of action. See, the demons don't want to follow. See, it's following and putting into action what you believe. It's obeying what you have heard. Is devoting yourself to the teachings that you have sitting in your lap or on your phone. How many people through the week open up that book and actually read it? Look at it. I, I see all these. <laughs> Do you read it with the heart to apply what you read? I'm like, thank you, Deacon Snow. I like that. Are you, tell us, are you active on what you're reading? That's the question. Do you put it into action? Because that's what's going to cause the fire to stir up in you through the Holy Spirit and that's what's going to draw men and women to him. It ain't this four walls. It's you. They, not the building. They. The church is not a building. You are the church. And you are called to go and compel and reach. Y'all got circles. What does the circle think about you and what you proclaim? What do you give or what are you selling them? Because that's what's going to determine if they want to be a part of what you claim to believe. I'm almost done. Next week we're going to, I just don't have the time. I don't have the time, y'all. And I feel God touching the body. I feel good now. Oh, yeah, I feel good. Go to Matthew 5 and 6. And we almost done, Sparks. Tell me, tell me to slow down. I got to save some of this for later because I ain't got that much energy. This is the one I want to get to, Sister Veronica. Right here. I want all of y'all to underline this one. Circle Matthew 5 and 6. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness. For they shall be satisfied. And King James is saying, for they shall be what? Filled. Those who hunger and thirst. When you see over there in Acts that they devoted themselves, it's because they hungered for it, Kalisha. They wanted it so bad to know the, the truth. They wanted to study. They was the first in line for Wednesday Bible day. They was the first knocking on the door to get in. They wanted to know, and they sought it out on a regular basis. They wanted to know. They, I love when I see Sister Kalisha and Sister Becky and all those show up for Bible band because they show that they hungry for it because we get it in on the Bible band. We talk about some stuff. And we got Brother Stokes on there. And we got Sister Veronica on there. And we got all, we on there and we talking and discussing the people jumping in the comment section. And we trying our best sometimes to answer the questions. We had one so good they was asking so many questions. We, we went a good 45 minutes longer than we normally do. Why? Because they were hungry. Put up hunger, Mike. Micah. Put it up there real quick. Hunger is to have a strong desire or craving for something. It actually means to thirst, to yearn, to need an appetite for. Do you have an appetite for the things of God? Not a religion. Let's, Sparks, let's understand the difference between a hunger for righteousness and religion. Religion is I get up. Sunday morning, brush my teeth, wash my face. I got to get there by 11 o'clock. I'm there. That's religion. 
Because on Monday, everything I heard on Sunday went out the other ear, and I'm back to my life. I did my ritual. I did my routine. Some of us, church going is just a routine. It's just a routine. It's just something I've been trained to do from a youth. But for other folks, it's a hunger. It's a thirst. I want to know. I see Anthony walking down the street. That don't look like a ritual. That look like a person who wants to know some stuff. I love seeing him coming down. He, and Anthony, you walking down the street, you look like you're ready to hear some stuff. You're ready to learn. And I love it. Look at this. I love it. I love niggas kind of when you open that Bible you, and you seem to be engaged in this. I love it. I see people writing stuff down and underlining stuff. Sister Veronica, I love it. Look at they say, I love to see people hunger for him. Because that's where it's at. Then you take that hunger and that thirst, and when you when you when you into something, see, I'm into certain things and I want other folks to know that I'm into it. I like movies. So when I uh, met Brother Stokes, found out that he was into the James Bond, uh, I got intrigued. I wanted, I wanted, was, we was down there supposed to be having a deacon's meeting. I'm talking about James Bond because I felt somebody that's into James Bond. I like James Bond. I like sports, so I know the sports like basketball. When we get to talking about LeBron James and, and Michael Jordan, I, and I like it. I remember me and Deacon Terry was up here painting the walls and I put some boxes on and I saw a little tweak in his eye and I was like, oh, he in the box and we could talk about Muhammad Ali and Joe Frazier and Mike Tyson. When you into something, you want to share it with people. And I'm the same way when it comes to this good news commission. Get to talking about the Bible too much around me. We're going to have a long conversation. I'm going to try to find out what you know. I'm going to try to see what you understand. I'm going to try to gain something from you. Look at your neighbor and say, they hunger and thirst. You ever been thirsty? You ever been parched? Sparks, you ever been hungry at work and you waiting for break to come so you can fill the stomach up? That's how you're supposed to be for his word. You're supposed to hunger after it. Any time that you can get around it, you're getting around it like a moth to a flame. It just draws you in. Amen. I'm, I, I got to close it down. We're going to pick up here next week. I got to close this down. I, I, I can't keep us here. But go back there to Micah to uh, uh, Acts 42. And we're going to close on this. Amen. And it says, they devoted themselves to teachings. That mean they studied to show themselves approved. Look at they say study to show yourself yourself because when God comes Anthony I'm not going to be able to stand beside you you're going to have to give answer for yourself Do, if you don't know him like you should know him it says seek and you will find knock and the door what shall be open who got to seek him you do and then Devoted himself to the apostles, teachers, and fellowship, and the breaking of the bread. Go to 43, and we finna get out of here. And I came over every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. Why? Because they were out and about in the community. They were devoting themselves to ministry. They were breaking bread in their homes. They was devoting themselves to the apostles' teachings. They were praying. They, look at they say they. And awe came over all the souls because they was out there working. Go to 44. We almost done. And all who believed together had all things in common. They was doing the work. If you had need, I, I took what I had and, and I made sure you had what you needed. If I had two pairs of shoes and you had zero, then I had one and you had one if you wore size 10. Maybe at 11. I might be in fit every night because, Sparks, you got some nice shoes. So don't, don't mind if it's 11 and wide. I can make it work. I'm messing with her. Go to 45, Micah. Y'all should be getting excited. 
and they were selling their possessions. They were so devoted, they began to give of their own to see the work done. Mm -hmm. Ain't looking for nothing back. And I know people like that. I know the hearts of y'all. Y'all are givers. I know that you are sacrificing. They look for nothing in return. I commend those hearts of people who, who, who take their own money and put it up and ain't looking for nothing back. Some people get shocked at that. I don't want nothing back. I just wanted to bless the church. I just wanted to bless the ministry. They sold their possession of their belongings and distributed to the proceeds to all as any had need. That's what the church, this is a beautiful depiction of a spirit-filled church. They've made sure the needs of the people were met. Now, we ain't talking about letting folks take advantage of us. We ain't talking about being fools. You come and you got a, a light bill, we're going to write the check to the people. But we're going to make sure your light bill is paid. We undid that. We got protocols. But our protocols shouldn't be so rigid that we can't help nobody. Our design to detour people getting help. The heart is desperately wicked. Go to 46, and we out of here. And day by day, attending the temple together, the temple, the church, the, the building, day by day, Sparks. Look at your neighbor and say, this was a lifestyle. This was their lifestyle. Breaking bread in their homes. Communion, the word. You can use it as a metaphor for the word, but it's really talking about communion. They was doing it in their homes. They received their food with glad and generous hearts. They was thankful. If they had a little, they was thankful. If they had abundance, they was thankful. And if they had abundance, they made sure others had because they were thankful. 47, we out of here. Praising God, having favor with all the people. The, all the people mean those who didn't know him. Those who were not yet believers. They had favor. That's, who, that's where the I was, and that's why God was able to add to their numbers because they was working so hard and impressing people so much that they got intrigued enough to come and see about this guy. They were like Zacchaeus climbing up the tree to see him walk by. Zacchaeus was in awe of what he heard about Jesus, said for so much so that he ran ahead of the crowd, climbed up a tree just to get a gander of them. Look at them and say they in awe. When we get active, the community will become in awe. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. You want to see these communities saved. You want to see these pews filled. You want to see our body enlarged, this local body enlarged. Anthony, devote yourself. Hey, Amen. Give me some soft music, Mike. It's time. Look at your name and say, it's time. Don't give me no soft music. Give me some hot music. I don't want no soft music. It's time. I feel good. It's time. It's time to pray together. Come up here on a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday night. We're going to have a prayer party, Sister Rhea. You know how we used to do. Get your pillow and your sheet. We're going to have Micah put some music on. And Sister Veronica, we're going to pray. Tara, we're going to pray for some stuff we want to happen. And they was on one accord in the upper room. What do you think they was doing up in the upper room? They were praying. They was talking to the Lord. And they was expecting something to happen because Jesus told them to wait, to tarry in the upper room until you be endowed with the power of the Holy Spirit. And they waited. And they was up there on one accord. And suddenly, look at them and say, suddenly. See, this all came after this. If you go up ahead, it's talking about what happened to them in the upper room. And the suddenly happened. And it says all in that upper room was filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Men, women, boy, and girl. And they began to speak in an unknown tongue. Stokes has said it flooded out into the streets. And those who were sojourning in began to hear them praising God in their own language. 
said, what is this? Saul was in awe because they understood that these people were not native to their lands and wasn't native to their language, but they heard them giving God praise in their native tongue. Look at your neighbor and say, oh, it can happen. Sister Terry, it can happen. It takes some active people, some faithful people, some devoted people. And then when they said, they begin to question, and some begin to question, are they drunk? Peter said, no, nah, we, we ain't drunk with what you think we drunk with. But we drunk with another wine. It sparks a new wine. And this wine won't let me stumble. and It, it's, it ain't going to let me uh, uh, lose myself, but it's going to talk to me, and it's going to talk through me, and it's going to shake your very essence. When you hear my words, and it said they begin to talk and proclaim, and then all of a sudden, the church began to grow. This was the first century church, Anthony. This was, this was the beginning stages of the church, and it began to grow. And it began to grow from synagogues to houses, and people were just infatuated and mesmerized by this good news. I want to know, are you mesmerized by it? Put your hands together in this house. <laughs> Amen. God has been dealing with me. You can be up and standing. I'm kind of deacons up. Because we're we going to pray. You don't have to stand.